So here's a second article about the same um, climber, Aaron Ralston. In the wilds of a Utah desert, without water or anyone who could come to his aid, Aaron Ralston had only two choices. He could die, partly pinned beneath one thousand pound boulder that had half fallen on him, that had fallen on him days earlier during a climb, or he could amputate his arm. All he had was a flimsy pocket knife, but it worked. On Thursday afternoon, hours after a search for him had begun, a bloody and dehydrated Ralston was found walking in Canyonlands National Park in eastern Utah. What was left of his right arm was wrapped in a makeshift tourniquet that he had fashioned after setting himself free from the rock. Once free, he had rappelled 75 feet down from the remote canyon perch where he had been trapped since Saturday. To survive that long before he decided to do what he did, and to have the mental fortitude to do that, is incredible, Mike Hill, a spokesperson for Canyonlands National Park, said today. Ralston, 27, was airlifted by helicopter out of the canyon and is listed in serious condition at a hospital in Grand Junction, Colorado. Authorities said he had amputated his right arm below the elbow. Rangers at the park could not recall any other comparable acts of survival, but Ralston's desperate and grisly decision is not without precedent. In Pennsylvania, a decade ago, a construction worker pinned beneath a fallen oak tree also used a pocket knife to cut off part of his leg to escape. At about that time in Colorado, a fisherman trapped beneath a boulder took the same excruciating step. Ralston's ordeal began last weekend in what was supposed to be a day-long adventure in canyoneering, an extreme sport whose popularity is growing in the wildlands of the West. It combines hiking and climbing up and then down rugged remote terrain. Authorities say that Ralston, a tall, gangly mountaineer who lives in Aspen, Colorado, was climbing in a t-shirt and shorts over a boulder in a three-foot-wide section of Blue John Canyon when the rock shifted and landed on his right hand and forearm. Ralston tried to push the boulder, but it would not budge. 99% of the time, when they get wedged in there, they get wedged in pretty good, Hill said. Ralston waited and hoped for help. It never came. By Tuesday, he had run out of water. The hours passed. Finally, on Thursday morning, Ralston decided that there was only one way he could get free. After the crude amputation, he managed to set up his climbing ropes and hooks and rappel down to the canyon floor. When he was spotted by rescuers who had received word of his disappearance from the outdoor store where he works, Ralston had been walking for seven miles with his wound. Incredibly, it was not his first brush with death. While Ralston was trapped, in this, trapped this week, the Denver Post published a story detailing how he and a few friends with an insatiable taste for powder decided to ski in the back county peaks of Colorado on a dangerous weekend in February and narrowly escaped an avalanche. Authorities said that all but Ralston's head and one arm had been buried in a collapsed mass of snow in that incident. He said he was lucky to escape alive. He walked away with only a black eye. It was horrible, Ralston told the newspaper. It should have killed all of us. All for a dozen turns. We never should have been there. But those who know Ralston say that whenever adventure beckons in the wilderness, he usually cannot help himself. He has climbed nearly 50 of Colorado's 14,000 foot mountain peaks, often alone. His climbing and hiking trip in the Utah desert last weekend had been part of his preparation for a grueling speed climbing challenge in Alaska soon. To be honest, sometimes we get pretty scared with some of the things he's doing, Royer After, manager of the Aspen store where Ralston worked, told the Associated Press. Earlier this year, Ralston, who has a mechanical engineering degree from Carnegie Mellon University, told the Aspen Times that he quit a budding corporate career at Intel for mountaineering. A quotation posted on Ralston's website, a famed international climber named Walter Bonatti explained why. Mountains are the means, the man is the end. The goal is not to reach the tops of mountains, but to improve the man. Staff researcher Madonna Lebling contributed to, his, to this report. Mountain, mountaineer Aaron Ralston, 27, was out for a day of canyoneering in Utah when the accident happened. The end.